Water is scarce in the middle of the desert, yet it is vital to sustain life. Situated in the Namib Desert on the western coast of Namibia, Gobabeb Research and Training Center conducts scientific research and training on desert environmental and ecological topics. Gobabeb hosts a number of permanent staff and students, as well as numerous guests per year. Therefore, clean drinking water is a necessity. Obtaining water in one of the driest places on Earth is no easy task. Water at Gobabeb is obtained from boreholes along the banks of the Kwiseb River. The Kwiseb borders the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Namib Sand Sea, and is an ephemeral river, meaning that it is dry for the majority of the year and only occasionally floods. When the river does occasionally flood, enough water is retained within the sandy soils to be extracted for use from boreholes. These are our two boreholes. This is a switch box of the boreholes. But for now, we have only one borehole in use because this one, they are not in use. Maybe years ago, the pipes have fallen down and they are still in there, but there's water, but it's not in use anymore. But they say that water is more solid than this one we are using now. These boreholes, uh, it bring us a natural water out of underground and we have enough water to supply the whole research station. Uh, we have in this port, we have a uh, switch that can switch to the borehole number one or to borehole to number two. You have to come and uh, switch it by yourself. You have to come and switch it by yourself, there's a switch. It means borehole number two, they are in juice. Yeah, and the borehole, the, uh, the date of borehole installation was 13th of December 1994. It's 19.97 meters deep. Yeah, but the water is fine, it's cold. Nice it's cold. cold, yeah. Cold. Nice cold. But it. You can taste it, how shall they eat this? Is it salty? Yeah, it's salty. <laughs> Although salty, the system in place at Gobabeb can purify the water so it is suitable for drinking. Because the water used at Gobabeb is extracted from deep under the Kwiseb River, any amount extracted influences the level of the underground aquifer. To ensure sustainable water use, the staff at Gobbleweb monitor the level of water on a monthly basis. We measure monthly the water level to have an idea where the aquifer is standing. By this we can compare to the other rivers of the Khan or the Swakop River which are being used for mining industry. These mining industries pump the water and so the water level is much less than the Khoisap River and by this we have an idea how much extraction is actually happening. We use a long measuring tape with a weight at the bottom of it. It inhales a bulb. This bulb lights up the moment it reaches water. So by that we know when it reaches the water level and then we just read off from the measuring tape where exactly the water level is standing. Currently around Gobabeb, there's no evidence that the borehole will dry up. Normally the first indication is that trees are dying off and Till now, nothing of that has happened and enough water is still being used and not overused. We are not the only one that uses the water along the Kwisip River. Where the Kwisip River starts outside Vintuk, 32 kilometers outside Vintuk, the water is used by the farmers and then used by us and the Topnas. But we have to keep sustainable use of the water because we're not the last one using it as Valfus Bay town is the last town that uses the water for consumption.
Water is extracted from the borehole and then transverses across the river via pipes and up to a system at the base of the water tower where it is purified. Water is then stored within the tower and then flows by gravity to the various facilities around Gobabeb. We are at uh, another base of our water tower. This is our purified uh, water purified system. The mucosin is the one they keep the dirtiness like the ground, like uh, the sand. They are coming from the bowl into the tank. The tank supplies the water into the aeroplane. And that one is the main one that keeps the dirtiness back. From here, the water goes through the pipes. They get it in the bottom uh, membrane. And what the bottom membrane is doing is they purify the water, they divide the salt from the water and they keep the dirt they, and they keep the salt back and send the clean water through the top membrane. And from, from the top membrane the water goes to our water tank, that one is the purified water. A sufficient water level must be reached and maintained in the water tower for a continual supply of water to reach the taps and showers. Therefore, it is important that the staff and visitors of Gobabeb are conservative with their water usage, such as taking only one shower per day, especially when large visiting groups are present, as this can be a heavy drain on the supply of the water tower. Gobabeb's system not only extracts and purifies water, but also recycles. It is wastewater from showers and toilets that returns to the trickling filter for recycling. The water is filtered here and then returns to the aquifer before it is extracted for use again. This is the trickling filter. It's a trickling filter number one. Yeah, this is the place where all the wastewater is coming in. And they have three different chambers in there. Uh, chamber one, chamber two, and chamber three. In chamber one, uh, we have a trap here. It keeps the waste back. The green one is the one where we catch our sludge. And the black one, it's, uh, it's a drinking field itself. It's, there are pumps in there. The one they pump up in, and the water comes up. Recently, a second trickling filter system has been constructed here. This is to increase the capacity of the overall system by reducing the demand on the current singular filter. For now, all the water was going to that trickle filter. And the septic tanks become very, very full and we have to pump it up sometimes. It's why we set up, uh, it's why they, built, uh, they decide to set up a second one here. And what we do of this second one is all the water, all the wastewater, all the water, it's coming from this clay house, from this part here, under, uh, here down here, plus the kitchen. We change all the pipes to this tickle filter uh, so that we can reduce this water from all these accommodations here, plus our, our, our accommodations. Uh, it's why the construction guy is busy, it's why the guys are busy. All the water is coming down here. On next week, I have, maybe in this week, I start to lay out the pipes from those campsites to the tanks and maybe also here. But we need the JCB guy here, the operator, to help us out here with these rocky places. It's now two weeks later progress. Since last time, we have dig first. It was a very, very hard work to come through like the rocky side. But we have to do that and we have made some good progress. Last week, there was guys from Agua Construction. There are the guys, uh, they are doing our aeroplanes, like trickling filter, 
uh, since uh, 2004. These are now our second trickle filter. What the guys was doing is to come and connect all the pipe works to the tanks. Despite little to no water being lost due to the sustainable recycling system, water in this environment is extremely precious and must be treated with respect. It is easy to become complacent with water use. To have sufficient water, boreholes such as the one at Gobabeb rely on the flooding of the Kwiseb River, which in turn relies on rainfall, a rare occurrence in one of the driest places on Earth. In recent years, rainfall has been scarce in Namibia, and the country is currently going through a drought. Therefore, water must be treated as the precious resource that it is. Water is an invaluable resource, and its life-giving properties are ever clearer in the hyper-arid Namib Desert. Sustainable water systems are vital for our future. If the global climate continues to increase along with the population, Sustainable technologies such as Gobabev's water system can provide effective ways in which to combat the negative aspects of these issues.